frosty today, boys. Well, it's early Tuesday morning, I think. Take my butt plug out. Sometimes they just kind of microwave them, but it looks like we got a good day. We're toasted perfectly. They put it on there for you. It's a little messy. Get all the little bits everywhere. One bite covered. You don't want to get those in the seat. Be like Frank the Bank, my old friend. He died 63 years old. He lived it up. He ate two of these every morning. We would go to Dunkin' Donuts. You go through the drive-thru. Two of these things. You like them. The only thing is, he had a 92 Chevy Corsica. He ate so many everything bagels and he never changed his pants. And I don't blame him. He had a very specific size. He only had one pair. That's all he needed to live life. He didn't care. This car had a stink to it already. But when you eat two everything bagels every morning, the granules get into the interior and the seats and you grind them in and you sit in there. And uh, after a while, it gets pretty ripe. Perfect amount of cream cheese in there. When did they stop with giving you the little knife and the pack of cream cheese? Seems like I always used to get that, but now they just put it on. He went to the drive thru one time. Before eating these, he used to eat corn muffins. He would get two of those at Dunkin' Donuts every morning. Heated with butter. He went to the doctor's, his blood sugar was so high, he told the doctor what he was eating. And he said, you can't eat that, Frank, you can't eat Corn muffins are loaded with sugar. Way too much sugar. So, what did he do? The doctor actually told him, get a bagel or something. You know, it's a little better. Well, one wasn't enough. He needed to get two. He overdid it his whole life. And, uh, that's the way you like to live. The way I see it, he was happy 
he was living. May not have lived as long as a lot of people. Might have had some complications towards the end, but he lived it up. So, today, we're roughing it. 1980, Chevy Cheyenne, one-ton dually camper special, 454, headers. The heat's not great, but boy, does she pull. Sounds good. I've had this number one steel kind of accumulating in the back. So I haven't been able to uh, use it much to do trash and stuff like that, dump runs. Just been throwing bags out with the other truck. But I figured I got a good amount of batteries on the garage floor. Figured I'd clean them up take them in also in the toolbox I have um, the two caps off that gold 94 Ranger that I sold but they wanted it loud they didn't care about no caps you don't need none of that I'm just gonna run it so I'm gonna cash those in at the same time and uh, while I'm down that way I figure I'm gonna go buy my favorite spot old harbor freight gotta get a new winch get a call to pick up a car got no way to get it up on there right now unless it runs uh, so that's what we're gonna do I think once we get on the uh, on the interstate, the heat kind of comes up, starts flowing a little bit. That blower motor is just on; it's just stuck on like very low. But the heat from the motor and the headers usually it warms it up pretty good. Starting to get a little drippage from the windshield, so we'll see what happens. steel we had it's a couple of boilers some rotors um, transmission jack a big truck jack and stuff like that we had uh, 1620 pounds 18225 I think it's uh, 225 a ton so not too bad there 182 bucks just for uh, I mean, it was heavy, but there really wasn't much in there. And then, on our goodie list, we had 15 car batteries. The price went down from 8 to 7. Uh, so, 105 bucks there. We had two of those little, like, uh, motorcycle batteries or something little tiny ones those were uh, five dollars 22 cents 18 cents a pound for those little guys so that gave us uh, oh we got the uh, Ranger cats that 94 gold Ranger I sold it well 
I bought that thing for 300 I sold it for 500 minus the cats. They did not want them. So, the front one was 110 The back one was $74. So that gave us a total of 294 on that stuff. I was hoping those Ranger cats would be a little better, but there you go. $476. I think that's what it was, something like that. 470 something in total. So we're gonna take that gonna go inside there spend probably all of it another friend in the parking lot left his parking lights on I had to give him a jump with my new cables the day has come boys the day has come brand new 12,000 pound winch. Woo. Went with the 12,000. Almost spent all of it. 460 bucks. I wanted the wireless remote. They had two different ones. The other one was 40 bucks this was 60 so for $20 more you get this cool little weatherproof case you get a fancy handheld uh, like joystick style remote and uh, this little gadget plugs in and it's up to 80 feet away oh it's also magnetic it says so, the other one was 50 feet, and it was just like a chintzy little remote, like, you know, a little bigger than, like, your uh, your key fob, you know, for your, for your car. But, um, yeah, for $20 more, what the hell, went with the fancy one. And, of course, you can't go to Harbor Freight without getting some Sawzall blades and uh, needed a new little thing of Gorilla Glue. That lasts a long time. A lot of things need fixing around the house. And I like these uh, magnetic strips here, 18 inch. You just screw them on the wall of the garage and you stick everything to them, all your tools. and Pretty handy, they're only five bucks a piece. I got three more of them for now. So there you go. Oh, we got some free projector style lights over there from a Jeep. Yeah, someone gave me those. Mess around with them. But that's our little haul. So 460 bucks. We got we got enough money to celebrate here. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, we got 17 bucks. Here we are. My favorite place besides Harbor Freight. Time to really celebrate. Best fries ever. If your fries aren't hot and crispy, let us know. We'll make you some that are. We'll see. No Rosie today. Too cold. She does not like the cold. And in this truck, as I said, heat's not very good. You know we got the chili. Ooh. Feels hot today. 
better be. Cold day. Let's see what else we got. Lots of napkins. Tons of napkins. Oh, oh, the hot and crispy fries. Let's see. No. Warm. Slightly crispy. Skimpy. Not even full. We got the Dave's double. Five, six, seven, eight, nine slices of pickle on there. Look at this. It's crazy. Lettuce, tomato, onion, mayonnaise, ketchup. Oh man, this is a meal fit for a king. mustard for the fries. It's funny, the fries were better before they put that new thing out. The hot and crispy thing. They were better before. Consistency. It's hot. The steam is rolling off of this. Oh. That is just how you like it. That's how I like it. Steam from that chili is going to warm the truck up in here. That's it. That's what makes me happy. Very simple. I'm not trying to be a millionaire here, you know. Grape Fanta. I had to say it three times. I don't know why they couldn't understand one. Does that sound right? Grape? I said Fanta Grape. What? Huh? Three times. 
Oh yeah. That's good. So we take and we take some scrap metal, some batteries that were laying on the floor. No money into either one. Take the ranger cats. So that we cast them in. We spent it all at Harbor Freight and Wendy's. That's a nice day. So, it's going to be my fourth winch on that trailer. The first one I ever had was a worn winch, very expensive off-road style. Came off the front bumper of a Range Rover. They never used it. It was just mounted there behind the bumper. Had a regular remote that plugs in. Becomes a real problem when you take that out, unplug it, plug it in many times. Those little pins in the connector, they don't like it. So. That was an issue with that one, but that winch was, it was very slow to pull a car up, even with full power. But it had a lot of torque. It would pull anything up there you wanted to. I pulled so many things. It would seize brakes, flat tires, and out of the woods. Well, it got tired and it just uh, it just didn't work so well anymore. The solenoids in the control box were very finicky. I had to keep messing with those, but so then I bought a mile marker winch online, four by four off roading, you know style company to make stuff like that that was pretty expensive I paid I paid 500 and something dollars for that and uh, they had the regular remote no wireless that winch was uh, a lot faster Maybe it was the worn one that was faster. Yeah, because the mile marker was slow. That's right. The mile marker winch was slow. It was a, I think it was a 10 or a 12,000 pound. But it had crazy torque. That's what it was. It was more for your Jeep, you know. You get stuck, winch yourself out of the mud or off a tree or something. Well, it had a very chintzy control box with a big on-off switch that was plastic, and that didn't uh, last too long. I used it for a while, got many years out of it, but um, then... I went on eBay and I had seen these Harbor Freight ones, you know. I always look at those when I go in there to the store. I always wanted to buy one. Never really wanted to drop the money. But I saw this one on eBay. It was uh, a company called Speedmaster. And 
again I've talked about it before in other videos but um, it was only just over 200 bucks for the complete thing and it had a it had a wireless remote I thought that was that would be pretty cool um, because years of towing cars everyone always wants to help you know the people that are there or people that are selling you the car they want to help you so they take they try to pull the ramps out they can't pull them out they pinch their fingers and they get hurt but then they want to steer the car up and you know you gotta you gotta control the winch or steer the car because obviously the winch didn't reach had a you know cord on it but you have to get you know winch it up a little go back turn the wheel walk back and forth a hundred times but with the Speedmaster one I thought this is going to be pretty cool because it's wireless so I could actually get in the car that I'm pulling on just steer it up hit the button that's going to be pretty cool, so I said, man, that's a good deal on this winch, so I bought it, I got it shipped to me, I put it on the trailer, hooked it all up nice, nice cables, two batteries, so I got a call to pick up my first car, actually, a uh, Chevy truck. So the first thing I do is I put it in neutral, you know, the winch uh, in free spool, and I pull out the cable. Well, when I pull it out, it keeps on coming. Real easy to pull out, you know. And it spins off, and it comes right off the spool. The bolt or they never bolted it, I don't know. But the end of it's got a little, you know, eyelet that bolts on to the spool and then that's what starts your cable. Well, came right off, no bolt. Well, I looked on the ground, the guy, you know, my friend that was there, I was picking up the truck from. I was all excited to use the new winch with the wireless feature. In fact, the truck ran and drove, but I just wanted to try out the winch and stuff, so I had to uh, throw the cable in the back of the truck and pull the truck on.
was working an eight to five. So I went to work and uh, middle of the day, actually I was working at a repair shop. I started to help a guy out as a mechanic and then turned into a full-time thing. But anyway, it was a nightmare. But I'm at work, I get a call from, from the wife. She's babbling on about something. I hear this loud noise in the background. What the hell is that noise? I can't hear you. She said, "The wind." I heard this noise. She said, I went outside. The winch on your trailer is just going. It's just going by itself. Now, the remote was in the glove box of the truck. I know what you're thinking. It wasn't a hot day or anything like that. There wasn't any chance that it was melting somewhere, but the winch was going, so I had it hooked back on the back of the trailer, and I had my J-hook and chain, you know, on there, and that, uh, the winch cable hooked to that. So, it started up by itself the wireless uh, little box must have went haywire inside short circuited and it pulled that cable and it pulled it and it pulled it and it bent an old style J hook well that thick metal it bent the J hook and that popped off and then it just brought the cable in and it brought it in all the way till it got jammed and and everything so anyway she's you know what am I gonna do I said you gotta unhook the batteries somehow luckily there was only one battery on there because one it went bad and I took it off so I said you just gotta you gotta unhook that battery either one one side negative or positive just unhook it so she went found a pair of vice grips and she got that battery cable loosened up took it off and the winch stopped running but very weird thing so I got home looked at it didn't seem like anything really got damaged other than the hooks and stuff um, Uh, winch wouldn't even work after that so I ended up contacting that company again and I said hey this thing is a piece of junk I said you know it could have been uh, little kids around you know people around I said that thing just starts going by itself and uh whips that chain that the J hook was on the other side of the yard you know and they said well that's very weird uh, and they of course questioned how I had it hooked up I said what does that matter you know and they said well I should have had a battery shut off ridiculous so I went back and forth with them and uh Finally, the guy said, well, he said, send it back to us. I said, the whole winch? You know how heavy that thing is? You know how much shipping's going to be? Well, we can't pay for the shipping. I said, wow. That's going to be crazy. It's going to be almost <laughs> as much as the goddamn thing costs ship that winch back. I said, all I need is the is a new control box because that's what went on it, you know. So I said, if I, I said, can I send you back my control box? You send me another one. Well, we don't we don't sell control boxes separate. So finally, one of the guys emailed me and said, send it to this address. 
and we'll figure out what to do. We'll check it out when it gets here. So I took it off, shipped it, paid the shipping myself. I got tracking number and confirmation that it got delivered and I kept emailing and no one's emailing me back so I've called and called and called finally the guy calls me back I mean weeks later he says we never got it we never got anything I said it, it you gave me the address I sent it to that address it confirmed that it's there he said, I don't know, we checked the receiving room and it's not there. Can't find it. So then I started to get really hot. Well, got to the point, guy hung up on me. Yep. Hung up on me, never returned my calls again. And what can I say, I, I gave up. So now, I may have been able to open up that control box and maybe fix it myself, but now I got no control box. So I'm stuck with the winch, just like it is. So, what are you gonna do? So I just uh, hooked it up straight pipe. Positive and negative on there, and uh, been running it like that for three or four years. Just zapping the cables on to pull the cars up. It's a stupid thing, but that's what I've been doing. And uh, the other day, after this long pulling stuff up, I hooked up to that Impala and. Uh, it pulled a little bit and then stopped. It wouldn't do anything else. So inside that motor, where those two posts go down, it obviously burnt out in there from a long time of, you know, um, zapping it. And uh, as I was doing it, I thought I was, kept feeling this weird feeling in my arm like man what am I having a stroke or something I thought I was hitting my elbow on the on the truck or something turns out I was wiggling the cable and it was actually uh, short circuited inside and it was sending volts right up my arm it was shocking me but it was a very light you know because it's only 12 volts but it is two batteries um, two batteries worth of you know voltage coming up and uh, I tested it again and it, it did it again you know I shocked myself every time I touched it so like you see and I was able to uh, even though that guy said those vehicles do not run I got them running and uh, I was lucky because uh, I didn't know what I was gonna do to get those on they were pretty frozen in the ground and uh, I got them running on there I threw the action you know the winch cable in the back of the truck hanging there had no way to spool it back up because the winch don't work so when I got home a little later I messed with it a little bit I sprayed it down with PB blaster and I uh, I cranked on those studs a little bit maybe you know they got loose inside I don't know I was trying anything I could and uh, I hit the cable and it sparked and it actually started working and I, so I just left it hooked up because I wanted to pull the cable in instead of having a big mess you know I would have had to cut it off at that point but um, it pulled that cable all the way back in but I mean, it was smoking. I mean, like on fire smoking. So I got the cable back in and then that was it. I could never get it to do another thing after that since. So the next day, well, I said, 
you know, this is finally it. I'm going to have to uh, go buy a winch. I mean, you know, there's no sense in hauling junk cars. You don't have a winch. How the hell are you going to do it? It's the most important tool of the whole thing. So, I say, well, you know, I had an idea like I did today, but this was a couple of days ago. Sir, it was on the weekend. I figured hopefully I don't get a call to get any cars or anything that I got to pull up. Well, sure enough, a guy that I know, a friend of mine, called me up at night. His friend's car broke down down the street, the uh, tractor supply parking lot, Volvo 850. Fuel pump went. He's like, uh, what are you doing? I said, well, I'd be happy to tow it for you, you know, but uh, the thing is, is I got no winch, and I told him the story, and he said, shit. I said, but if you got a couple of guys, I said, we can push it on. My trailer is very low to the ground. It's easy to do. I've done it before. So he got another guy to come up, and I went up there, and uh, some other guy that we knew, he was happened to be at the store, and he came out, and he said, I'll help too. We had about four or five guys, and it was very easy. We pushed it up on the trailer. I strapped it down and uh, got it over to his shop so we could fix it, but I haven't done anything since then, um, so it's now Tuesday. That was on the weekend. That was Saturday night. So it's Tuesday and I got my brand new winch and I got to get it hooked up. And it's five degrees outside. So try to get the trailer in the garage and, and uh, get this thing hooked up. And it should be nice. Should be nice with that fancy wireless remote. And the thing is, well, buying it from Harbor Freight, yeah, it's an hour from me, the store. It's an hour home from here, but uh, you buy it from there, and at least you get a um, 90 day warranty on it. If something goes wrong 90 days, you get it uh, exchange or refund. Uh, they offered a uh, a one-year warranty on it replacement plan was 80 bucks and a two-year was 120 but um, I decided that you know what I'm just gonna go with it I'm just gonna roll with it and uh, I should be able to tell within the first few toes that um, it's working right so That's it.